hello students welcome back to my channel in this video i am going to discuss in brief about the fuels fuels can be defined as combustible materials consisting of carbon as the major element which are capable of releasing large amount of heat energy these fuels can be classified into two types primary fuels and secondary fuels primary fuels are also known as natural fuels or artificial fuels based upon the physical state both primary and secondary fuels can be classified into three categories solid liquid and gaseous fuels coming to the primary fuels good example for solid fuels are wood coal and that of liquid fuels are petroleum coming to the gaseous fuels natural gas is good example similarly moving to the secondary fuels charcoal and coke are good examples of secondary solid fuels petrol diesel kerosene are good examples of secondary liquid fuels whereas biogas oil gas are good examples of secondary gaseous fuels for the selection of the good fuel one must know what are the characteristics of a good fuel the efficiency of the fuel is measured in terms of calorific value always a good fuel is supposed to have high calorific value whereas ignition temperature should be moderate it must contain only low moisture content non combustible matter should be low and it should not give any toxic gases on combustion so CO H2S SO2 are the toxic gases so a good fuel is not supposed to release these gases calorific value can be defined as the total quantity of heat liberated when unit mass of the fuel is burnt completely in the presence of air or oxygen units to express calorific value are calorie kilocalorie british thermal unit and centigrade heat unit coming to the calorie calorie means it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water through 1 degree centigrade coming to the kilocalorie it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water through 1 degree centigrade moving to british thermal unit it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 pound of water through 1 degree foreign heat and finally moving to centigrade heat unit it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 pound of water through 1 degree centigrade so if we see the relation among the units 1 kilo calorie is equal to 3.968 british thermal units that is equal to 2.2 centigrade heat unit calorific value can be classified into two categories one is higher calorific value and the second one is lower calorific value higher calorific value is also known as gross calorific value so it can be defined as the amount of heat liberated when one unit mass of the fuel is burned completely and the combustion products are cooled to room temperature so here no heat is wasted so according to joulomb formula hcv or gcv is equal to 1 by 100 into 8080c plus 34500h minus o by 8 plus 2240s here c h o and s represents the percentage of carbon percentage of hydrogen percentage of oxygen and the percentage of sulfur present in the given fuel sample whereas moving to the lower or net calorific value here the combustion products are allowed to escape that means a little amount of heat will be wasted in the form of water vapor so whenever if we consider a fuel along with the carbon hydrogen is also present so during the combustion process hydrogen will be converted into water and we have to remove the latent heat of water from the higher calorific value hence the expression for lcv or ncv is equal to hcv minus 0.09 into h into 587 h is the percentage of hydrogen 587 is the latent heat of steam formed so the steam will be liberated from the fuel sample and hence in order to get the value of lcv it should be subtracted from hcv 
The flue gas analysis can be done by using RSAT apparatus which consists of three bulbs. First bulb consists of KOH and here the amount of carbon dioxide present in the flue gas can be estimated. By using alkaline pyrogallic acid the amount of oxygen present in the flue gas can be estimated. And finally by using ammonical cuprous chloride bulb if there is any carbon monoxide present in the flue gas it can be estimated. So if carbon monoxide is found that means the combustion is not complete. So the combustion process is incomplete. Moving to the solid fuels wood can be converted into coal in different steps. Initially wood is converted into peat then to lignite next it is converted into bituminous coal and finally anthracite coal is obtained. Here the percentage of carbon present in the wood is 50%. The calorific value is totally based upon the percentage of carbon. As the percentage of carbon increases, the calorific value also increases. Bituminous coal is the most widely used coal variety. It consists of 83% of carbon. Hence its calorific value is 8300 kilocalories per kg. Whereas anthracite is the highest rank coal which contains 93% of carbon hence its calorific value is 8600 to 8700 kilocalories per kg. Bomb calorimeter is mostly used for the determination of calorific value of solid and liquid fuels whereas junkers or gas calorimeter can be used for the determination of calorific value of gaseous fuels. The quality of coal can be estimated through its analysis. Analysis of coal can be done either through proximate analysis or through ultimate analysis. Moving to the liquid fuels, the source of all liquid fuels is petroleum. It is also called as crude oil. Refining of crude oil involves two steps. First one is separation of water and the second one is removal of sulfur compounds. Separation of water can be done through Cottrell's process. Sulfur can be removed from the crude oil by treating with copper oxide. So whenever crude oil is treated with copper oxide it selectively reacts with sulfur and the sulfur is precipitated as copper sulfide. In order to get different liquid fractions from the petroleum, fractional distillation will be carried out. The major liquid fractions include gasoline, kerosene and diesel. So here the gasoline is having boiling point from 40 to 120 degrees centigrade. Especially the liquid fuels consist of hydrocarbons. Depending upon the length of the carbon atoms, the boiling point increases. Gasoline consists of hydrocarbons ranging from C5 to C8. Especially gasoline is the liquid fuel with greatest demand. Its composition is carbon 84%, hydrogen 15%, nitrogen plus sulfur plus oxygen will be 1%. Its calorific value is 11,250 kilocalories per kg. Moving to the kerosene. Here the hydrocarbons ranging from C10 to C16 can be considered as kerosene. Hence, its boiling point is 180 to 250 degree centigrade. The important applications of kerosene are, it is used for the preparation of oil gas and also it is used as jet engine fuel. Diesel oil ranges from C15 to C18. Hence, its boiling point is 250 degrees to 320 degree centigrade. Gasoline or petrol is the liquid fuel with greatest demand and directly from the crude oil we will get only 20% petrol. So through cracking 50% petrol can be obtained and the synthetic petrol contribution is 30%. Cracking means it is the process of decomposition of high molecular weight hydrocarbons into low molecular weight hydrocarbons. It can be classified into two types, thermal cracking or catalytic cracking. Again, catalytic cracking is classified into two types, fixed bed catalytic cracking and moving bed catalytic cracking. Through cracking, 50% petrol can be obtained. 
and moving to the synthetic petrol it can be obtained by following two different methods and the first one is Burgess process here coal powder and heavy oil is used as the raw material nickel is the catalyst the temperature is maintained at 450 degree centigrade and pressure at 200 to 250 atmospheres then it results in the formation of gasoline the yield of the reaction is 60 percent second process is fischer tropsch process here water gas is used as the starting material and its composition is co plus h2 petrol efficiency can be measured in terms of octane number whereas diesel efficiency can be measured in terms of cetane number in order to prevent knocking anti-knocking agents can be added to the petrol the most widely used knocking agents are tel ferrocene toline iso octane tel means tetraethyl lead in order to reduce knocking properties power alcohol can be advised it is the composition of 25% ethyl alcohol plus 75% petrol coming to the biodiesel it can be produced from waste to vegetable oil through trans esterification methanol plus KOH can be used for the trans esterification moving to the gaseous fuels first one is natural gas its composition is methane LPG means liquid petroleum gas its composition is butane plus butene and it is having the highest calorific value 27,800 kilocalories per meter cube it is the domestic fuel so it is used as domestic fuel CNG means compressed natural gas its composition is methane that is CH4 coming to the other gaseous fuels coal gas it can be obtained by heating coal up to 1300 degree centigrade then it will be converted into coke and coal gas its composition is methane plus h2 oil gas composition is methane plus h2 when we discuss about the calorific value of these synthetic fuels oil gas and coal gas exhibit highest calorific value water gas composition is co plus h2 producer gas composition is co plus n2 and this producer gas is mainly used for the manufacturing of ammonia through habas process biogas is also known as gober gas and its composition is methane plus co2 acetylene gas can be prepared by treating calcium carbide with water then it results in the formation of acetylene gas and it is having the highest calorific value it is of the order 25916 kilojoules per meter cube hence it can be used for the welding and cutting of metals or glass if you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks for watching have a nice day